Okay guys, 18.1. So we're finally here. The 2018 CrossFit Open is upon us and we're here to give you guys the strategy as it relates to doing this workout um, in the most efficient manner. To start, what we're going to do is we're going to give you guys the high level overview of this workout as it's broken down from a strategic standpoint. Um, and we're going to do this for somebody that would be interested in, 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 in qualifying for the CrossFit Games. And then from there, we're, we're going to go through the different scales um, to show you guys the, the, the best way to break this thing down given your own individual skill sets okay so let's talk about the workout um, as a, uh, just breaking it down so the workout is as many rounds and reps as possible in 20 minutes of eight toes to bar 10 dumbbell hang clean and jerks five on the right five on the left and then uh, 14 calories for the guys and 12 calories for the gals on the rower all right here's how this thing breaks down the workout has 1,200 total seconds available in it, okay? So that, that's just what's available in the workout. You got 1,200 seconds to do work, okay? We believe that the winning splits for this workout are going to be under 90 seconds, which would result in 13 or more rounds, and we saw that tonight with Sam Briggs when she did it. She may, she may have the best score, okay? She may have the, the score to beat. Um, regional splits, anybody on the West region that is interested in, in qualifying for that regional, they're going to have to have 95 second splits or better, uh, which is gonna result in 12 rounds plus, plus about 15 repetitions or 12 and a half rounds, okay? And anybody that's interested in making a regional team in their gym, um, you're probably going to need about 12 rounds in this workout or, or right at it, okay? That's just what we're thinking, which would result in 100 second splits. All right, all that stuff breaks down to this is going to be consumed by the movements in the workout as well as some other stuff. And we're gonna get into that here in a sec. So first things first, toes to bar, they, re they require two seconds to do a rep. Okay, and again, this is for somebody that's gonna be moving through the whole workout, right? Um, hang clean and jerks, those are two and a half second reps. To row a calorie, it takes about three plus seconds. Okay, so uh, depending on how, how, how strong of a pull you are, but it's gonna be, or polar you are, I should say, but it's gonna be about three seconds per calorie. Here's the thing, the fastest reasonable and possible round, it, it, the fastest it can be done, in my opinion, and, and what I mean by reasonable is, we can all probably you know, sprint through one round of this thing and, and get it done around a minute and 15 seconds or a minute and 10 uh, for, for advanced athletes, right? Um, however, that, we know that nobody's going to do that because they're not gonna sustain that for 20 minutes. But we feel like it's sustainable for 20 minutes. The fastest possible round breaks down like this. 16 seconds set on the toes of our, 25 seconds on the hang clean and jerk, and 35 seconds on the rower, which is 76 working seconds that are consumed per round. And here's the thing that's really interesting. This workout has 11 seconds or maybe even 12 seconds of transitions um, that, are, uh, that, that, are, that are just required, okay? So there's a lot of transition time here. So what that equates to, if you, if you add the transitions and the working sets, that equates to about a minute and 27 seconds is what it would take for somebody who's gonna win this workout to sustain or better, okay? So that's, that's at the highest level here. Okay, the percentage of work breaks down like this. The rower, there's 455 seconds that are gonna be required for the row, which is about 38% of the workout. So this workout is a 30, is literally a 40, 40% of it is on the rower. The point that I'm making with that, this is not a recovery row, folks. For anybody that's, that's interested in winning this workout or making it to the games or regionals, do not recover on the rower. You need to be competing on the rower. There's a lot of time there, and this is where the workout is going to be won. Okay, 27% of the workout is going to be done on the dumbbell, and 17% of the workout is gonna be done on toes to bar. This is not a toes to bar workout for somebody that, that is at a, at a very high level. This is, this is absolutely a rowing workout, and I've got all these exclamation points down here to prove this point home. This is a transition workout. If you row hard and you make quick transitions, you're, gonna, you're, you're ultimately gonna put yourself in a position to succeed. If you're at this level trying to make regionals or, or, or win the workout or whatever, okay? So that said, it's about rowing and rowing well and fast for you, and it's about setting your equipment up in a way that allows you to make clean and quick transitions, okay? So, moral of the story, if you want to do this workout to the best of your ability, it requires you to row hard and fast, 
um, and, and it requires you to make quick transitions. The question that you should ask yourself before you do this workout is how many unbroken toes to bar do I have? If you have 20 or more unbroken toes to bar, maybe even 25, you're going to be in that category of fitness that your fitness is going to allow you to keep moving through this workout. It really just comes down to at what pace, okay? And we're gonna get into that here in a sec, pacing. Um, if, you, if you were in that category where you have, let's say, a set of eight toes to bar, eight to 10 toes to bar, you should be breaking these toes to bar right out of the bat. And this is a toes to bar and a grip workout for you, okay? And you're gonna be recovering on the row. If you're in that category where you can do like a, a couple of toes to bar, your toes to bar should be done in singles. Um, and this is a, also a toes to bar workout for you and it requires work rest management on the pull up bar for your toes to bar while recovering throughout the other elements of the workout. So if you're really, really fit, this is a rowing and transition workout. If you, are, if you kind of struggle at toes to bar, this is a toes to bar workout with proper rep work rest management from the start um, and then recover on the other movements. Recover meaning you're allowing your grip um, and your hip flexors to recover so that you can continue to do toes to bar in the workout. Okay guys, so let's talk about pacing. How does this thing, how does this thing look? So we'll start with somebody that's, that's trying to do really well in this workout on the leaderboard, somebody that's trying to make regionals or, um, or even win the workout. And then we'll go into um, people that might struggle with the toes to bar aspects of this. So <clears throat> for somebody that's trying to make it to regionals, this workout is a, is a rowing workout and this is a transition workout for that person. Okay, so what that means is you need to row well and you need to make very, very fast and very, very clean transitions because that's where, that, that's where the opportunities are in this workout. Again, 38% of the, the workout is on the rower, 11% of the workout is on transitions. That's nearly half of the workout is just on the rower and just on the transitions between the movements. So you need to be quick and you need to be efficient there. For anybody who'd be interested in trying to win this workout, this is going to come down to, for the men, maintaining 28 strokes per minute at 1,525 or more calories per hour pacing. That's in a very aggressive pace. Um, and, and for the ladies, this is gonna be about the same strokes per minute. However, this is gonna be about 1,325 per hour pace. Okay, so 28 strokes a minute for the guys, 1,525 or more. Um, and for the ladies, uh, uh, 13, 20, 1,325 calories per hour at a 28 minute pace. Not, there's, there's very few people that can maintain that. So if you're watching this thinking that's what I'm gonna do, don't, don't let yourself get sucked into that, okay? There's a couple of different ways that you can break this down. I would recommend for you, everybody on the rower to pace it off of their strokes per minute, okay? And go with the, with the calories per hour that you can sustain around 28 strokes per minute. I think it's going to settle in there for almost everybody just because of the duration of this workout. Um, and in, if, you're, if you're rowing at 32, 33, 34, 35 strokes per minute, that's just not gonna be sustainable and it's not gonna come with any power, okay? Speaking of which, power, the concept two rower, it rewards you for being powerful on a calorie row. The more powerful you are per stroke, the more energy it requires, the more calories per hour you're going to average on the rower. So your pull, your stroke should be hard, it should be aggressive, all right? Um, that said, put your damper up. It doesn't have to necessarily be all the way up to 10. If you're a longer, taller athlete, um, more powerful athlete, it should absolutely be at 10. Um, but, but damper as high as possible for you is what I'm going to recommend for the row. Um, and I'm also going to recommend, we're going to cut in some video here in a little bit uh, of ways to get in out of the rower that is, that is most efficient and ways to make your transition that is most efficient as well. So um, 28 strokes per minute is what I'd recommend. If you, if you want to win this workout, you're going to need to be over 1,525 calories per, per hour. Um, for the men, you're going to need to be over 1,325 calories per hour. For the women, anybody that's going to be interested in going to regionals, um, you're going to need to be slightly under those numbers, um, not a ton under them, because we all know that getting to regionals is really hard. So those are kind of the, the, the benchmark numbers for anybody on the row. And this should be sustainable, okay? So when you're in the workout, 
You shouldn't be like, this is blowing me apart and I can't sustain this for 20 minutes. Whatever you settle in at around 28 strokes per minute, you should be able to sustain that calorie per hour pacing um, for the 20 minutes. All right. Let's go over to the setup because the rowing is taken care of now. Now let's get into setup. Setup is super important for this because again, there, there's just so much time in the workout that's committed to transitions. So your transitions need to be very, very quick. We're gonna recommend that you put your rower nearly, the back of your rower nearly lined up underneath the pull-up bar. At the most, no more than, than one foot away from the pull-up bar. Um, and we want quick in and out of the rower in, 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 for obvious reasons. The, the dumbbell, we're gonna recommend that you line up with the, heel, with the heel lock. A lot of people are gonna set it up in sort of this sort of linear fashion where they've got like pull-up bar, dumbbell, and then rower, and that's a mistake. The distance that it takes to walk that um, is, for anybody that, that's, that's really competitive, you're wasting way too much time there. You're adding a, a second or two per round, and you're, you're, you're taking away 20 seconds from the workout. Um, it's not necessary. So setup is gonna be very, very important, okay? So when you're doing your toes to bar, we want you to face away from your rower, so you should be facing that way when you're on the pull-up bar, so that that way you can quickly turn around, grab your dumbbell. This should be absolutely no more than four feet away from you, uh, your dumbbell, from the, from the pull-up bar, so that, that way you can get instantly on it, and then get instantly into your rower, and then get instantly back to the pull-up bar. Transitions and rowing, transitions and rowing. The person that transitions the cleanest, the person that rows the best, is going to win this workout. Okay, so for people that, um, that they just, they, they can't do toes to bar, they know that they're not gonna be able to do toes to bar unbroken throughout this whole, this whole workout. Um, pacing for this workout really comes down to work rest management for you um, as it relates to making sure that your toes to bar are sustainable for the duration of the 20 minute workout, okay? So you're going to recover on the row, so all this transition stuff that I, that I was talking about before, it's not that it's not not nearly as important for you um, because you're going to be recovering on your row. Period. That's just where you're going to recover. So, um, in an order, in an effort to make sure that your your toes to bar don't go away. So, if you have if you have uh, eight to ten unbroken toes to bar, we're going to recommend that you do these in doubles from the start. So, two reps and you're gonna do them every 10 seconds. So that means that at three, two, one, go, you do two, and then you drop underneath the pull-up bar, shake, and then at the next 10 seconds, you jump up and you do two more, and drop and shake. And, and sustain this throughout the duration of the workout. This is gonna feel agonizingly slow for anybody that has eight to 10, because you're gonna probably wanna do eight to 10 unbroken. But again, this is a toes to bar workout for you and it's about sustaining toes to bar for 20 minutes. If you come out and do that big set right out of the gate, it's not gonna be there for you um, at the, about the six minute mark and you're gonna start doing random sets and you're gonna have random rest associated with it. And that's where it's really gonna become costly for you. So right out of the gate, you should be very conservative and have uh, work rest management that allows you to continue to move. So we're gonna recommend if you have eight to 10 unbroken toes to bar with a fluid hollow to arch swing, uh, then you're going to be doing these in doubles, okay? If you are in that category where you have like three to five toes to bar, um, unbroken with a fluid hollow to arch swing, we're going to recommend that you do these in singles from the start. If you're in this category, you're gonna be reduced to singles anyway, and so what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try by breaking these up in singles. And what we want is we want one rep, and we want you to rest three times the amount. So it's, it, 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 it's work rest management of one to three. Here, I'll write it like this. So what that means, a toes to bar, is, including your jump up and your set, is gonna take you three seconds for one. So that means every 10 seconds, you're going to do one rep. Because three seconds of work, followed by six seconds of rest, that's nine seconds. And we want you, it's just easier to do do them every 10 seconds. That'll be easier for you to count. And that's gonna allow you to continue to move through the toes to bar in the workout, okay? Your row is very relevant if you're in this category. Don't worry about 
calories per, per hour and strokes per minute, any of that stuff, because what you should be thinking about doing is recovering and letting your grip recover, so not grabbing onto that, that handle too hard, um, so that that way when you do get back to, uh, to the toes to bar, you can get through that set. The dumbbell, uh, if, if, if you're in this category, chances are you're gonna need to be breaking up your dumbbell sets um, by going five, resting and shaking, and five, resting and shaking as well. Um, so it, 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 that's just kind of where, where most people are going to uh, land with it, okay? So, um, Break up your toes to bar right from the start. Don't be in a hurry on the, on the pull-up bar right from the start and you'll be just fine. So the toes to bar. So um, the way that we want you to set up uh, your equipment, again, it should look just like this. So you're doing your toes to bar here, you're doing your dumbbells here, and you're stepping into your rower here, okay? Um, and, and we want you to think about doing this in a way that allows you to go one, two, three, and not do a bunch of random stepping or random moving around. Because each one of those is seconds and it's not necessary to lose them um, in, in a workout like this. Especially with the importance of transitions in this workout. With 11% of the workout being in transitions, these need to be crisp, tight, and clean. For your toes to bar, we want you to face so that, that way every time you come back to the pull-up pull bar, you can just get right on it. So when you execute your set, one, two, and eight. Instantly turn around, your dumbbell's gonna be right here, and you're gonna, can, you're gonna charge through your set. Okay, this is the method that we'd recommend. It's basically, it's a kettlebell swing curl and press, if that makes sense. Keeping the elbow as tight to the body and the dumbbell as close to the body each, uh, each time for just for cycling purposes. It's gonna be quicker the closer the dumbbell is, and it's going to be quicker the lower the elbow stays to the ribs. So any of that elbow high and outside stuff, just get rid of it for this. This is a unique movement, okay? For getting into the rower, watch this. Sit on the slide. One foot in, strap it. Pull, put your other foot in, in the pull. And this, so you got one foot strapped down and this foot's not going to be strapped down. Okay, this is by far... The, the quickest way to get in there while still getting your foot strapped in so that you can pull with power because pulling with power in this workout is important. Getting out of the rower, one thumb down, heels up, step out, and then instantly into our next rep. Okay, go ahead and relax, Anthony. Your transitions, if you are smart, should be under three seconds if you're in that elite spectrum of, uh, of category. Anything more than a three second transition is time that is getting wasted off of the clock. You people that are in that category, Congratulations, you guys are super fit. Don't waste time on transition stuff. You guys have the fitness to keep moving. Make your transitions crisp and clean and you'll thank yourself later. Okay, so our recommended warm up for 18.1. It looks like this, okay? It's, it's pretty straightforward, pretty basic stuff because it's a long workout and you're gonna warm up during the workout. Uh, but there is some priming stuff that you're gonna wanna consider here. So, uh, three rounds of uh, 14 calories for the guys, 12 calorie row. Do this at a light, a very easy pace on round one and try to bring your pace up to around what you're going to try to sustain in the workout by that third round of the warm up. Okay, most gyms are not, all your rowers are gonna be taken up um, in the workout. So if you need to ski or bike that, um, or, or do a, a true form run um, that's going to last about 45 seconds or something that's monostructural, that's perfect. Okay, that's going get, to get, uh, get you breathing, get you primed in the right way for that. Okay, for the toes to bar warm up, 10 hollow rocks and then 10 hollow to arch swing. Okay, so we're not going to recommend doing a bunch of toes to bar to warm up for this. We're just going to set the, the foundational movement patterns and then go on. Um, and then 10 dumbbell clean and press. Okay. The row, the bike, the ski, that's pretty straightforward. Let's show you what the hollow rock is and let's show you what the hollow to arch swing is. Okay, so the hollow rock, you're just gonna do this on your back. Okay, hands up above the top of your head. And what we want here is the quad should be tight, the toes should be pointed up away from the body, shoulders should be up, and you should be balancing on your low back muscle. Okay, so that you can rock. That's why we call it a hollow rock. One, two, three, up to 10. Go ahead and relax, Anthony. Okay, so to prime the other side of the swing that is the toes to bar, uh, we want to do a hollow and arch swing on a pull-up bar. Looks just like this. Ten reps. One, two, and ten. Go ahead and relax. Okay, the thing you want to think about is making sure that you are pulling down on the pull-up bar this way as opposed to trying to do these straight arm. That's a mistake. All right? And then ten dumbbell clean and press. So, you just start off with something light, a very lightweight dumbbell for you, and all that we're working on is priming good movement patterns here. So, 
and bring it up, clean and press. Yeah, so we're gonna do these from the hang, okay, just like what's in the workout. Okay, go ahead and uh, face that way, Anthony. For efficiency, what we want you to think about here is let the dumbbell swing back between the legs and then keep the elbow in tight to the body because that, what that's gonna allow the dumbbell to do, it's gonna allow the dumbbell to stay tight to the body. And then from here, press it out, okay? Um, if, you're, if you need to jerk in the workout, you can do these as a, as a jerk style, which would look like this. Most people though are going to be just, just straight up push pressing it overhead, okay? So 12 calories or 12, uh, 14 calories for the guys, 12 calories for the gals um, on something that is a monostructural movement, 10 hollow rocks, 10 hollow arch swing, and 10 dumbbell clean and press. That's our warm up. Have fun.